Welcome to the CAM APS FX session. So within this session, we're going to go through how the algorithm works, a brief look at the evidence behind it, how at Birmingham, how we set up and educate regarding the system, how to think about assessing a download and looking at case studies. Now we need to have full disclosure before walking through here. This is the system that we use the least and are probably the least confident on. Also, the information that we give in here is our best understanding as it stands. So there'll be probably people watching this who are turning in their grave going, mm, not sure about that, yeah, mm, not sure about that. And that's absolutely should be put, putting a critical eye on. We're just going to give you what we understand at the moment as our best approach to it. And you can obviously add and adapt that uh, as you know. So it's important you understand that as we go through. On the other three systems, we've got a very high level of confidence with regards to our approach. But this system, we are in our infancy of understanding it properly and getting the best out of it. So have a skeptical view as you move through. So as you know, the CAMS is available with either the Ipsomed um, or the Dana Pump. And again, you can see here, it will vary um, depending on what's available to you within your healthcare system. Obviously you can get pre-filled cartridges and you can pre-fill cartridges with the Ipsomed and that's not possible with the Dana, for example. <coughs> It works on a model predictive um, control algorithm and it is without doubt the cleverest algorithm in the fact that it takes in more variables. So it takes into account insulin on board, carbs on board, where the sensors gluing, going, previous gl glucose sensor, insulin sensitivity, etc. So there's a lot of things within the model that makes it more adaptable and also the personal glucose target you can elevate from low to high, 4.4 to 11, and also have different time segments. So there is a lot of opportunity to mold this to the person in front of you, but obviously with more options, sometimes comes more challenge. So in terms of the sophistication, obviously 2.5 to 4 hours is where it predicts the glucose level is going to go over, which is a lot further out than even the Omnipod 5 at 60 minutes, uh, and certainly the other algorithms which are a lot shorter at 30 and 10 minutes. And the prediction is based on the past insulin and glucose data, such as active insulin time, which it works out itself, insulin sensitivity factor, which it works out itself, and obviously the carbohydrate intake. So it's important that the carbohydrate intake that is entered is fairly accurate, therefore, to allow the algorithm to work as effectively as possible. And the model then develops a number of different scenarios to modify future insulin delivery to get it to the target glucose desired. And the insulin doses are delivered by extended bolus delivery every 10 to 12 minutes. And as I mentioned, the beauty of this system, it has an adjustable personal glucose target from as low as 4.4 to as high as 11. So it gives you a lot of options to meet the person in front of you with regards to their insulin sensitivity, hypoglycemia awareness, etc. It uses body weight, total daily dose from the last five days and learned insulin needs from previous days and obviously the current glucose level and trend arrow and carbs on board. So there's a lot of things feeding into the decisions made by the system. Here we have it in real time. So across we have the glucose values. You can see between four and 10 is the green area. So therefore if the green dots every five minutes are in green, it's within the target level. If the green dots go above, 10, you'll see they turn to orange. And if they go below four, you will see they go into red. So you can see how the glucose behaves. Very importantly, you will see the carbs entered across here in terms of um, what has been entered. And what is important to know with the, cam with the CAM system, for here you'll see a four with no entry. It has something called add meal. So this person may have put these four grams in to stop a hypo and doesn't actually want insulin, for example, or because it's below target, therefore you don't see a bolus, but you will see the carbs entered as a here, for example. But generally you'll see the carbs with the uh, constant amount of insulin required for that. And you'll see the bolus insulin delivered below. Here you will see where the algorithm is on, and then if you've got something like boost, you'll see here. And when then when you'll see where the algorithm is giving extra insulin, you'll see obviously the amounts increase. Um, and then obviously when it's on the lower side, you will see obviously no increases. So again, you've got a lot of information, first of all, for the user's behavior. Does the carbohydrate counting look accurate? Are they giving an adequate number of meals? How the bolus insulin is going in? And if things like boost are used, you will see therefore the algorithm increasing in its intensity. Across the bottom, you can see only 4% low, 71% timing range, and 132 grams carbs. So from an individual day perspective, you have got a lot of information, but obviously you want to layer these on top of each other, which we'll discuss in the downloading later. Um, so you can actually see patterns and find out what is going on. 
But again, this is just nice to see the algorithm sort of in play and kind of the inputs that you can understand from a user behavior, how the algorithm is working. Therefore, that's going to support you in helping the child and young person to meet their requirements. Now, this is a download from one of our children and young people. We've only got very young people on the CAM APS, hence the numbers of carbohydrate entries are low and the frequency of snacking is very high. So obviously it prevents, presents an, uh, a serious challenge for any system um, because the more frequent the, the inputs go in, such as carbohydrates, the more challenging it is to keep on top of things, for example. Some of the specifics is compatible with both the DANA and DANA RS and DANA I, and most recently the Ipsamed. It is compatible with not only the Dexcom G6, but the Libra 3 if you're using the Ipsamed pump. The G7 is supposed to be coming later this year, and at the moment it's only compatible with Android phones, but is predicted to be um, with Apple and iOS coming with the Ipsamed soon. You'll have to keep up to date with that, but as of March 2024, that's the best information or the most accurate information we have. Because this is the most well-researched and evidence-based um, algorithm, you will find it is available for one year and older, for pregnancy, total daily doses as low as 5 to 350, weights from 10 to 300, and it's licensed for both rapid and ultra-rapid insulin. So I think it's important to just take a moment here to recognise Dr. Havorka um, and his team, that the amount of time and effort and energy and research that has been put in to this algorithm and put in overall to the automated insulin delivery space to get get to the point where automated insulin delivery systems are going to be available in the NHS for almost everyone with type 1 diabetes needs to be applauded, needs to be recognised and we need to say a huge thank you. So certainly from the team at Birmingham is a huge thank you to this team for producing the level of evidence base that they have to show the benefits of automated insulin delivery systems. It uses weight and total daily dose to determine algorithm parameters. And again, it uses extended boluses every eight to 12 minutes to determine the increments or decreases in insulin behavior uh, and the automatic corrections. There's no sort of discernible difference between correction insulin and basal rate increases. It just goes together as an extended bolus, for example. Importantly, from an adjustment protocol, the good thing is it, it runs from a phone, so you can actually do remote boluses. The downside is you have to have that phone within six meters of you for the algorithm to continue to run effectively, which means that the phone needs to stay in the proximity of the child and young person, which for most people is fine, especially for teenagers. But for young people, obviously, you've got to find some way of attaching that phone to them in a reasonable way. So it's just worth thinking about on an education front to make sure that happens. What is fantastic is you can have um, a glucose level as low as 4.4 as a target and as high as 11. So if someone wants really tight control, this really does offer targeting um, lower glucose levels. And again, this could be fantastic for someone who wants tight control overnight because they've got very, um, there's not much going on. So you can target as low as say 4.4. And then during the day when they're a bit more sensitive to the insulin and there's more sporadic and random things happening, you can get that target level up to a protection level of 7, 7.5. And you can actually have up to 48 different time blocks Obviously, you'd be mad if you did that, but you can have a lot of time blocks to try and make it specific to people's individual sensitivities. So it does offer um, the user quite a bit of leeway in terms of adapting the algorithm by just using the personal glucose targets. The default set at 5.8, but you can obviously change that as required. You have to program the carb ratios and keep the weight up to date. Add meal functions are useful for hypo treatments and for high fat meals. And obviously the personal glucose target makes a big difference. The overrides are very useful. The ease off function, basically wherever you've targeted the glucose level at, it increases that target by roughly two to three millimoles per litre and directionally reduces the aggressiveness of the algorithm by about 30%. Very useful for activity and very useful for people going out drinking alcohol because not only do you want to increase the target level, you want to relax how aggressive the algorithm is. The thing that this has that other ones don't have it is a boost function. So if there's times where you would want to increase the aggressiveness of the algorithm by 30 to 50%, for example, what you'd want to do is obviously put the boost function on. So it can be useful for sometimes if people have had prolonged suspensions during the exercise, it can be useful after that. If people got periods of ill health, they can put it on from there. So again, it offers some op opportunities for um, individualization and in the moment decisions. Obviously, loss of CGM data or connection with pump and uh, the handset being out from an algorithm perspective is going to push you out of automated mode into manual mode. So it's important to note that. And you can either get the data from Gluco or the CAM APS um, follow up. 
So again, that they're the system specifics. Here's just some information with regards to, depending on the age, what timing range you're expecting, what time below range, and what mean glucose you're expecting. So in terms of timing range, overall 70% from the real world data, but obviously, as we've always said, children and people under the age of six, sporadic activity, random snacking, very sensitive to insulin often, you're going to be getting 65%-ish timing range, but older than seven years, you're getting closer to the 70% mark. So it's just important to note, children and young people, we've got a job on our hands, and that's where a Elizabeth session shortly is going to come in to really help us think about how we can manage that. From a mean glucose perspective, the mean glucose is going to be higher for the younger children as it is opposed to older adults. And then the time below range is going to be slightly higher, pushing towards three and a half, four percent for children, young people under the age of six. Again, because of this sporadic activity, random snacking and inability to plan what's actually going to happen. So it's important to know what we're going to be expecting. In terms of time using closed loop, the beauty of this system is it's generally very, very high. Um, the other thing you would expect is total daily insulin is going to be a lot lower um, for children and people under the age of six, and then it increases to higher levels. Obviously, as the units go down, the sensitivity challenges happen. And one good thing about the Cambridge system is you can actually dilute the insulin for the very, very small and young people that we have for a couple of our children and people that has made the algorithm work more effectively with people in very small insulin doses. Uh, and Louise Collins is a person who I would be contacting from our team if you want to know more about that, because that is certainly beyond my expertise. This is kind of how we start our children and young people. We'll generally send one flat basal rate. We'll set their carb ratios for three times across the day. And then their sensitivity factor in case they come out into open loop mode um, just at one across the day. We'll generally start them at 6.1 for their target glucose level, but we'll very quickly adapt that depending on what the person needs. And again, you've kind of got maximum basils and all the other things that need updating in the background as well. And the daily maximum, uh, important here to keep that up to date to allow the system to work effectively. That's very important. Again, with our program, they will select and we'll put them on accordingly. At the moment, our teaching workbook is under construction for this. As I said, this full disclosure, this is the system we're least um, familiar with. So we're still finding out how to um, educate effectively and we're working to develop that. But we certainly have survive and thrive guides, for example, making sure that things like it's in auto mode, that people got spare batteries, the hypo guidance, and we've got the add meal thing in here for people once they've treated their hypo to put the hypo amounts in so the algorithm doesn't go into overdrive, for example. The same for the high glucose levels, you want to be making sure that if someone is unexpectedly above 14 for 90 minutes to two hours, that they should be. Um, changing that cannula and obviously if the ketones are above 0.6, giving that pen correction and changing the cannulas, for example. And again, making sure that they're changing the cartridge and infusion sets effectively and doing the right cannula fills. And again, they've got some videos to move through there. Certainly from a food and insulin perspective, from the high fat and protein meals, maybe you just go with 100% up front, as Francesca says, find out before you fiddle, just see if it works. If it doesn't, you've got the option of 50% of the carbs up front and then 50% as a slowly absorbed meal to allow the algorithm to know that more carbs are going to be going in so it can increase the intensity of the insulin going in. Exercise we'll discuss after, but ease off is what you would tend to use 90 minutes before if um, if possible, but certainly put it on just before if you can't remember. But again, we'll go through that during the exercise session. So at this point now, unfortunately, we don't have a video right now that will walk you through how to do a download. But in terms of setting up a download, it's just the same as an OmniPod 5 or a T-Slim. You set the same parameters and they're as I've showed you before on this video, you'll see what kind of the, the information you can see. What the download tool will be really useful for is letting you know what you can change, which is the personal glucose target and the carb ratios, but importantly, things you need to keep up to date in the background, daily maximums, low reservoirs, max basal rates, max boluses, and the ISFs, and then where exactly to update those, whether in the handset or on the pump. So at this point, what you should now do is go and go below, get the case studies, Use the, the tools associated with that, work through and find out the time below range, time in range, the time of the day to focus on, the survive and thrive questions, and then potential changes that you would think about and the settings for manual mode. And work through those and see, get your confidence in what the downloads look like, how the algorithm works, and what you can actually adapt to support your children and young people.